Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take the plunge into my second purchase, King of Fighters game, in their entire series to date with the King of Fighters 15. With 15 installments, the main reason why I never gotten into the King of Fighters was due to how big a fan I was and still am for Capcom and their Street Fighter series, which I own almost every version. The closest I got into playing and having fun was with Capcom vs SNK 1 and 2 for Sega's Dreamcast. Not to say I never enjoyed SNK Fighters, it always seemed more alien to me in gameplay, but I do love me some Samurai Showdown and a big fan of that franchise. The only other King of Fighter I purchased was King of the Fighters 13 for the Xbox 360 and I enjoyed it for its animation but not much else than to say I actually owned it. With a huge sale on Amazon being at $29.99, I took the plunge with a friend. All I can say is that this is the most time I've ever spent on a King of Fighters game to date, but there is a really good reason why. The King of the Fighters 15 was developed and released by SNK in 2022 for Sony's PlayStation 4 and 5, Microsoft Windows, and for the Xbox Series X and S. The game is your typical fighter with an arcade story, online and training modes with ranked and casual matched online. The arcade pretty much is just how it is and you just mow down throughout the game with your desired characters. The story mode focuses on the next King of the Fighter tournament being held after the disappearance of Verse who was the main antagonist from King of Fighters 14 as the story goes. The powers of Verse also brings back other deceased warriors from the past to join the fight with a paywall of course in paid DLC like Fatal Fury's Geese Howard to Samurai Shodown's Hamaru. In the end the player fights their way to the championship where an evil presence appears again that ultimately needs to be defeated. I never truly paid too much attention to the story with the cutscenes adding some clarity but also many questions as I have no idea what's really happening. Then there is the fighting and gameplay. You are able to choose from three characters at a time versus another three. When all combatants are defeated on one team, the round is over and the other team is victorious. With any King of the Fighter I played in the arcade or at home, I could never master the style and gameplay and isn't as fluid as Street Fighter and the supers were just way too hard to pull off. Welcome to King of Fighters 15 with the same combo rush that returns from 14 to help newcomers perform combos and supers with a single button. This game becomes a combo machine and feels like it takes cues from Dragon Ball Fighter Z and Capcom vs Tatsunoko. In those games, combos were and supers were very easily implemented in a chain by simply pressing one button. The same is here where every character has a quick combo with just pressing a light button four times. This will create a combo that will lead to a super move and if the power meter is high enough, even more. The gameplay is broadened, making those flashy combos and supers possible without hurting your hand, trying to deliver precise and timed controls. Of course, this leaves those experienced players to push the combo system even further. I'm not quite there yet, and I don't think I will be there anytime soon, but this development has made me experiment more with all the characters, with the combo system being easier, and you can just still play like Street Fighter without punishing yourself if you want. The visuals here are a bit of a letdown in the in-game cutscenes and portraits of the characters, but it's all made up when the action starts. The game looks fantastic and the animations are top notch in my book. The backgrounds to the insane super combos look fabulous visually and will always put a smile on your face 
Whether you are taking or receiving punishment is how good the game looks. I marvel at the animation of each character that helps me explore new fighters than sticking with the normal than the usual Ryu and Ken characters in Street Fighter. <laughs> The online mode does have its lag here and there, but it's smooth enough where your game is still competitive and very fun. I played on a Wi-Fi rather than a wired connection and really didn't have too many issues, but it's very noticeable at times. I was still able to compete and never really blamed the lag for any of my losses. <laughs> The biggest con that I have here is that sometimes the super combos are way too strong. But then again, it can also incite a comeback when you're down. Also, I hate the fact that the paid DLC characters can't fight against you as the computer controlled ones, but you can't use them without paying. It's like the DLC on the disc that's already there that costs you money to buy, but you need to pay so that they can generate more money, but it costs you 5 to $30. Street Fighter versus Tekken, anyone? Overall, the game is probably the best King of Fighters game that I've ever played due its easy gameplay for anyone to get the hang of. Anyone with any sort of knowledge of any fighter will be at home and have fun exploring each character and creating new combos all the time. The King of Fighters 15 gets an 8.0 out of 10 that although has a terrible DLC game plan, does deserve credit for a well-rounded and fun fighting game that really opens up to new players with their easy to get into gameplay. That's it for this look and review of King of the Fighters 15. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all in the next upload. <laughs>